Hello! In this video we will talk about buffers and show how to prepare one. So let's start with the definition of a buffer. A buffer solution is an aqueous solution consisting of a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base, or vice versa. pH of a buffer solution changes only very little when a small amount of strong acid or base is added to it. Buffer solutions are used as a means of keeping pH at a nearly constant value in a wide variety of chemical applications. Without buffering, fluctuations in pH would alter the ionization state of the molecules under study, which might then behave differently. Before biochemists appreciated the importance of pH, experimental results were often poorly reproducible even within the same laboratory. In nature, there are many systems that use buffering for the pH regulation. For example, the bicarbonate buffering system is used to regulate the pH of blood. The bicarbonate buffer system is an acid base homeostatic mechanism involving the balance of carbonic acid, bicarbonate ion, and carbon dioxide in order to maintain pH in the blood and other tissues and to support proper metabolic function. Catalyzed by carbonic anhydrase, carbon dioxide reacts with water to form carbonic acid, which in turn rapidly dissociates to form bicarbonate ion and a hydrogen ion. For this video, we are going to prepare Tris EDTA TE buffer, which is a slightly basic solution with a pH at 8, and it's a major constituent of DNA extraction buffer and it helps the lysis of cell wall and nuclear membrane. TE buffer is also a DNA preservative which stores DNA in intact form for a longer period of time without degrading it. There are many buffers which may have more than 10 components, thus it is critical to work meticulously whilst preparing buffers. You have to carefully calculate how much of a chemical you need to obtain desired concentration of that chemical in your buffer. To measure a small amount of chemicals down to just a few milligrams, we use precision weighing scales. The scales are so sensitive that they can even be affected by the movement of objects around them. You need to close a little above the scale to have a more precise measurement. In order to make sure the measurement is accurate, you have to wait until there is this asterisk shaped sign appears. This sign indicates the measurement is finalized. Just before you start your measurement, you need to tear the weighing plate to eliminate its weight. Then you can begin measuring. For the calculation, if you do not trust your dimensional analysis, or you just want to simply save time, you can use this GraphBed Quick Calculations website. At the very top, you can calculate the required mass from volume and concentration. Once you type in the final concentration, molecular weight of your chemical, and the final volume of your mixture, you can obtain the amount needed. For example, for a 10 millimolar 100 milliliter EDTA solution, we need to weigh 372 milligrams of EDTA powder. Prior to addition of our chemicals, we filled a graduated cylinder with distilled water. It is important to indicate that we didn't fully fill in the whole 100 milliliter water, but left some space. If 100 milliliter was filled in first, then addition of chemicals would change the overall volume, thus the final concentrations. We place the magnetic stirrer inside of the cylinder to make sure buffer is well mixed throughout the preparation. While adding the chemicals, you need to make sure there are not any residual powder left on the weighing plates. In order to get all the chemicals into the solution, you can wash the plates with the help of a pasture pipette by adding water and then transferring the remaining chemicals into your solution. pH meter helps us to determine the pH of a solution. The probe of a pH meter is highly delicate. When not in use, it is kept in a special buffer, which is 4 molar potassium chloride, to keep the probe wet and calibrated. Before pHing, the probe must be rinsed with distilled water and gently dried with the tissue. After dipping the probe into the mixture, pH meter is turned on and reading is initiated. It is also important to leave space for adjusting the pH of the buffer. As we will add base to adjust the pH, we will need space. If you use a more concentrated acid or base, the changes in the pH will be more sharp by the addition of just a few drops, as opposed to using a less concentrated acid or base. On the other hand, using a more diluted acid or base will take up more volume as they are not as concentrated. In our case, we use one molar sodium hydroxide to adjust the pH to 8. The meniscus is formed when the sides of the cylinder pull the water up the sides. This is due to adhesion. Adhesion refers to the tendency of water molecules to be attracted to other substances. You should always read the bottom of the meniscus, therefore it is critical to check the level from the eye level, otherwise the result is considered as inaccurate. To make sure the meniscus is at the correct level, you can top up the solution with a drop by drop manner. Once your buffer is done, you should label it with all the details and then at the end you can store it under recommended conditions until your next use.